day fine people a very warm welcome to you my name is Nick on the ZX Spectrum 48k although this game works on the 16k and was designed for that but it's called Grid Runner published by Quicksilver in 1983 it's written by well it says here SAT who the hell's that and also the better known Jeff Minter the game also came out on the Commodore Amiga Commodore 64 Atari ST and the BBC Micro from what I can make out it's like a combination of transversion meets centipede if you're aware of those two games yes we're on a grid uh, we've got a ship down the bottom there with a green one now we have to shoot all the body parts I think of this blue thing coming down a bit like centipede but at the same time these white things going horizontally and vertically on the outside are shooting at us and we can avoid them like transversion but we don't have to collect any objects like transversion anyway let's move up and down so yeah very centipede -y. Um, sorry if you have trouble seeing red, uh, but there we go. It's red on black. Men 5. Uh, looks very, very basic. It moves quite basic. It's not moving very smoothly, but it's 1983. It's Quicksilver in that sort of era. If you had that, get this game back in the day, then let me know. You you know the game's called Grid Runner because it always says it on the top there. Grid Runner, Cyan, and then Magenta uh, scores trucking away in the top right. Now, hopefully, hmm, hopefully I can get off stage 1. I don't think there's any upgrades that I'm aware of. I'll blast you straight away to try and avoid getting blasted both in the game and in real life. Now in Centipede, when you shot uh, a body part, it turned into a mushroom. That's sort of like uh, here, and uh, turned into uh, objects. As uh, I guess that's obviously the um, the inspiration. If you had this game on the Amiga, Commodore 64, Atari or BBC Micro, let me know. Did it play similar? Not quite sure why it would have come out on 16-bit systems, but um, uh, I'd imagine I'll review those at some point as well. Right, okay, a full-price Amiga game? I don't think so. Uh, well, anyway, well, come on, get off stage one, at least. Up, up we go. Yes, it is a little bit tricky. It's a nice idea. Uh, Jeff Minter games always tend to be a little bit unusual, uh, mixing certain things. Runner of the grid, the grid runner. If you've done this in real life, then let me know. Doesn't feel a great distance away from a type in, but anyway, uh, there's a lot moving on screen at the same time. It is going to be a distance. No color clash though. Cyan going across the red, so that's good to see. Place your best below. Will I actually get off stage one? I'm, I'm not confident, you know. So a nice little font there. Um, you know, shows that they could be bothered rather than just using the standard basic font that comes with the Spectrum, which you saw with a lot of games. These reviews, you know this already, aren't about expert gameplay. Let's see now you've got on your first or second go. This is quite indicative of how that would have gone. A lot of people might have just seen this on the C90 tape without any instructions, but what I've told you, what I've shown you, is pretty much how the thing uh, plays. A Commodore 64 might have music uh, playing in it. Uh, I can't wait to find that out at some stage in the future. So have a look at the review of Transversion, if you haven't already, or the uh, Futuristic Homebrew, based off that called Sector, which was reviewed quite recently at time of recording. And I've done that. Grid zapped. I've done it. Well, I don't know how I did it, but it is. This is stage two, getting more difficult. Yes, have a look at Transversion, the review, or Sector, the Homebrew, and Centipede as well, if you're unaware of that. I'm a bit of a late finder to Centipede, but I knew of it. And there's a lot of those sort of games on the ZX Spectrum. Central Pods, just to name but one, but there, there are quite a few. It's a popular game. But you do get those uh, arcade games that get converted, well, in hundreds and hundreds of different forms. Space Invaders and Pac-Man are probably the most uh, popular ones. Space Panic as well, to a degree. Uh, Galaxians. Um, you know, that's basically when game was just getting started, and that's the foundations or inspiration for a lot of games. Cuba as well, let's chuck that one in there too. Right, uh, compilations were good to get back in the, the day, it contained a lot of um, those games. Um, Asteroids was one of my favourites, uh, Meet Your Storm was a version I had on the ZX Spectrum. Right, had some great sounds in that thing. It's all about the memories, it's all about nostalgia, and this channel in particular is all about the stress busting. If you watched this far into the video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and a huge, huge thank you to those people that are already subscribed and have subscribed for a while. If you want to be a member on the channel, get access to uh, to see what videos we're looking at, what games we're looking at in the following week, and have your say about those on that video, uh, then please consider being a member too. Uh, click on the members button. It doesn't join you straight away if you want to see what it's about. You can do, but there we go. It's trying to give you a bit more. I'm going to give you quite as much the upper tiers as I, I wanted to in this struggling time. But, um, you know, 
something happened. Inflation, I think, and I was really up against it. So thank you for the members. Uh, did think about um, stopping the channel at one point, but I won't do because we're stress busting. And we need that there. We need the community spirit. Uh, competition is quite high as well. Uh, there we go. As it always will be, and it, how it always should be to give the uh, viewer the best uh, possible viewing experience and lots of different options. Right. Doesn't help me though. Right. Come on. Let's keep kabooming. Biff, 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 biff. If you want to see other ZX Spectrum games we review, there's loads. If you feel a bit under the weather, you've got some time off, and want to binge watch, you'll never be able to get through the whole playlist, I guarantee you that. Um, well, comment below if you have done. But if you want to see ZX Spectrum stuff, they're all in the playlist. Click on my username, it takes you to the channel page. There's a playlist tab, unless YouTube have changed it. And ZX Spectrum will be there, along with a load of other systems. So if you've got any other systems that you, you grew up with, then, uh, you know, might be worth a look. Um, I started off with the humble ZX Spectrum 48K, and later um, a Commodore Amiga. I've got um, my first hand, hand, handheld, if you don't count those LCD games uh, there, uh, as a Game Boy Advance. A bit, bit of a gap. Then PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. I had a PS Vita as well, and a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and that's as far as it's got so far. So not a, not a great deal, didn't own a Dreamcast or a um, Nintendo 64 or a SNES or a NES, but I've played a few of those games. Didn't own a Commodore 64 or Amstrad CPC, but I am enjoying seeing all of those. The Vectrex or the ColecoVision seem like interesting systems. Wish I'd owned one of those. They look very, very bizarre. So uh, yeah, I would like to have a look at some of those if I'd had it back in the day. So there I go, I've got my score. It's 23090. So if you're playing this at home, see if you can beat that wonderful, wonderful score. I bet you can't. I bet you cannot. So I, f I imagine there's a few games like this, but anyway, let's go in again. Again, the reviews to be about 10 minutes, unless I'm particularly enjoying myself and forget all about the time. Uh, basic as this one is, I am quite liking it really. I feel like I've got a, ch a chance. I got off um, stage one uh, at least once. Um, it does look like the uh, thing firing at me, at least on the vertical, is um, quite rhythmic. They've been, they've been shooting horizontally. That looks a bit harder to, to spot. I think it just shoots one yellow we weird thing. I'm not sure I completed that then, did I? Mm, perhaps there's some other way of completing it. Anyway, stage two. Getting gradually more hectic as you go through. I think, um, really, I prefer centipede, the basic of it. The grid's doing weird things to my eyes, like a big shreddy. Uh, or a pork cullis on the one penny piece, but uh, you get plenty of lives in this one. I think, yeah, I think I, think I prefer transversion. I prefer, I think I prefer centipede, but the two come together for something interesting anyway. A bit like a chicken ticker lasagna. I like lasagna. I like chicken ticker. A chicken ticker lasagna. Not quite sure about that combo, but it's interesting. But would I eat it again? Mm, I might give it a swerve. Jeff Minter, put your favourite Jeff Minter game. I think he's more familiar um, with other other systems. Attack of the Mutant Camels, was that one of his? I'm not sure. Right, so I think I've reviewed a few of these games going through. It is, uh, I am finding this quite relaxing though, despite I'm dying every four seconds. But uh, I, I'm, I'm finding it quite relaxing. It's got the greens, got the cyan, I'm not having to think too much. My success is a little bit random as I, as I get through. But you know, wasn't it always back in the day? I mean, if I was around, it, it's sort of like a game to be played on your own, to be fair. If, you're, if, you, if your friends come round, if a friend's come round to, to um, play games as well, you're really a bit subconscious it wasn't the most exciting game in the world. A bit like playing, I don't know, Patience or something, or that, that card game. Uh, you have to... Um, what's that card game? We've got rows and rows of stuff. It used to be come up with Microsoft, Microsoft Windows. Anyway, you can name it down below. We have to pick going a 6 and a 5 and a 4 and alternating suits in different columns. Man, my brain has got fried. Beep, 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 beep. We've reviewed quite a lot of games now. Uh, time of recording, almost 1,200, I think. But they are, I've been told there's 33,000 uh, ZX Spectrum games at the moment, so I've barely scratched the surface. Um, it's going to get to a point, I think, where homebrew games outnumber the classic games, and that's that be interesting. Every Wednesday, we do tend to look at a homebrew game. Normally, they're after the year 2000. Normally, they're in the last 10 years, to be honest with you. But homebrew games started really in the late 90s. The ZX Spectrum's run ended commercially in 1990 or 1991. There wasn't too much uh, after that. Uh, a few games from Russia around that sort of era, 96, like 97 of various degrees. But compilers, uh, modern day compilers, have really come on. 
So the limited memory, 48K, 128K, it seemed like the um, the writers can really push what's possible with the game now, in particular, uh, Zosia Entertainment. Retro Souls is another one that seems to get the most out of the um, out of the computer, multiple graphics. But there's there's quite a few different game designers now, so you don't have to uh, code from scratch. AGD has produced um, a plethora of really, really uh, good games. That's arcade game designer. Um, more basic than that, you've got the Jet Set, Willy Utilities and Manic Mind. So you can redesign all those levels and create your own game. I'm not quite sure how they get the music in that one. Uh, there's a game, uh, Doctor Who Surrender Time, or Submariners, which was made with uh, a 3D maker, 3D game maker, and that was that was backed by um, CRL Group back in the 80s. So you know, if you've got time on your hands, you can mess about with quite a lot of these without having to code right from the basics. And if you did want to code right from basics and learn about the assemblers, I'm sure uh, by googling there, if you had an infinite amount of time, you could come up with quite something useful. I mean, I really like back in the day, though I didn't generate any games. I did like that graph paper you got and having a grid of 8x8 and designing my own graphics as much as I could do and then programming in with that, um, that data command. It was a bit before that as well. It used to be Pope user something, 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 something. But then uh, I learned that you could do it with like the data command to do it a bit quicker. Uh, and then you could, um, it was a bit limited to how many graphics you could design, but there's a bit of program where you could. Um, Design all the keys and have much more graphics available. Um, if you're not a coder, you won't know what I'm going on about because I haven't explained it very well. But if you are a coder, you you, you get the gist. You know, Nick almost gets it. Yes, well done. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, said Elvis Presley. Right, you know, so it's not just about the gameplay. I will share a bit of my nostalgia, a bit of my my knowledge and stuff. You can see I'm uh, Joe Average when it comes to gameplay, and also Joe Average when it comes to programming. Um, some people got the, got the knack of stuff though quite quickly and those out of programs ain't good and that was back in the day of learning seemed to be more important uh, with modern day uh, uh, gaming there's, it's a little bit inaccessible you, a kid's not going to be able to sit down and write a game for the PlayStation 4 uh, with this you could you could just stretch you, on Commodore 64 as well I think I'm not quite sure about the Amstro CPC I'm sure you could have done you could just write print at 4 comma 2 welcome to my game pressing the key to continue and have something going on even if it was a quiz game, it was like multiple choice, you had to give answers to stuff. You can't do that now. Imagine with the Nintendo Switch 2, some kid getting that thinking, right, that's, this, this Mario Kart 12's good. I think I might write a game called uh, Nicky Kart 1. Nicky Kart 1, that sounds like a good game. <laughs> what characters will be in that? I'm, 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 I'm scared. Right, the nincompoop man will be there as well with a big floppy green hat on. Grid Runner. So what do you say about this game? Well, early 80s. It's interesting. It was okay, but not brilliantly. It's of an era. It's like two games welded together. Um, not as good as the individual games separately, in my opinion. But it would have kept a kid entertained. If it was cheap enough, it would be fine. Not quite sure it can stand up in 16-bit land, but on the Commodore Amiga on this RST. But we'll see. Commodore 64 might have a bit of an extra sound to it. The game feels like it might be more at home on a BBC Micro, to be fair. And that's not dissing the BBC Micro. It's just got that sort of like vibe to it. Maybe it's in, I don't know what colours are in the BBC Micro. Those people that review BBC Micro games or watch those, let me know about that. Got, got no, got no um, plans to review BBC Micro games. Didn't own it back in the day, but didn't own a Commodore 64 either, so who knows. Who knows where the future goes. Master System as well, that was another 8-bit system, wasn't it? And the NES, there we go. It's quite a lot to choose from back in the day. The, the sort of like system that didn't really um, uh, make it too well. The Jupiter Ace, the Oric 1. Dragon 32, there were games for those, but then, although they had some success, they didn't really hit the super mainstream like the, the big ones um, did. There you go. If your big ones haven't hit the mainstream, then comment below. Yes, well done, that was safe to say. So yeah, that was an interesting game. Liked playing it, but um, yeah, I played it for quite a while, in fact. So hope you liked having a look at that one. Overall, I liked it, though it's not, nothing special, but interesting. Uh, that was Grid Runner on the ZF Spectrum 48K, uh, but designed for 16K, published by Quicksilver in 1983, uh, a Jeff Minter special. So if you've got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything retro, then by all means, put that in the comment section below. You're always more than welcome. Until next time, take great care of yourself, and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, I think I prefer transversion. I think prefer, I prefer sympathy. But the two come together for something interesting anyway. A bit like a chicken ticker lasagna. I like lasagna. I like chicken ticker. A chicken ticker lasagna. Not quite sure about that combo, but it's interesting. But would I eat it again? I might give it a swerve. <laughs>